In the last video, we talked about this TCP session, and this is used, of course, to establish communications between two computers. And, of course, we talked about the three-way handshake, and then all the packets that go back and forth during the entire session, and then a finished packet is finally sent and that compromises the entire TCP session. So in this video, what we're gonna do is actually take a look at a real packet capture that captured all the packets that occurred in this TCP session. And what we're gonna do is use Wireshark. Now, you don't have to worry about Wireshark right now. In this lecture, I'm just gonna teach you how to read one of these packet captures. And so this is basically somebody who just browsed a web page and they captured all of the packets back and forth between the two hosts. So remember we said we need a three-way handshake. Well, you can see that occurred right here. Now, first you can see the two hosts involved. The first is this 145.254.160.237. And so we could say it compromises this computer A right here. So it established communications with this 65.208.228.223, which is hosting the web page. And we could say that is this computer right here. So somebody opened a browser and they connected to the web server. So what did we talk about is fundamental. It's this three-way handshake. And you can see right here, this is the first packet. And that is identified right over here. You see that number one? That would be the first packet in this trace. You see packet number two, packet three, and packet number four, and so on and so on. So packet number one contains the first part of this handshake, this three-way handshake, this SIN, which is identified right here. And remember we said that is the first packet that needs to be sent, and we can see that in this diagram. The next thing we needed was the SIN ACK, and you can see that right here in the second packet. And again, it was 145.254.160.237 that sent the SIN packet. And then 65.208.228.223 responded in the second packet. You can see now it's the source sending an acknowledgement packet to 145.254.160.237. So that's the second packet right here, this SIN ACK. And then we said we need a final acknowledgement that needs to be sent. And we see that right here, 145.254.160.237 sends the final acknowledgement packet. And so here is the handshake. These first three packets are the handshake. After this handshake is completed, communications can take place. And you can see right here, we have an HTTP GET. Now we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next video, but they're just going to download.html. And so if we take a look at this entire trace, you can see that there were 43 packets sent. And what did we say in the last video needs to end it? It is a finished packet. And you can see that is sent right here. Here's the fin, which was sent from 65.208.228.223. And then we can see 145.254.160.237 sent its finished packet, and then the session was ended. So the important thing is to remember the three-way handshake and then communications can take place. By the way, this is just a very simple trace. You could have thousands of packets in one of these traces. And then of course, as we said, everything ends with a finished packet. So now you can see how a TCP session works. And as I mentioned before, the packets are numbered sequentially. So that's important. So you can see the first one here, second one here, these are all in sequential order. And you also see there's a time elapsed here too. So you can see here, the first value here is in seconds and the second is in milliseconds. So you can see the first 10 packets took about two and a half seconds. And if we go all the way to the bottom here, we can see the entire session lasted about 30 seconds. So now you have a basic idea of how a packet trace works. Now in the next video, we're actually gonna talk about the HTTP protocol. Okay, see you guys then.